welcome to this week's edition of Men Behaving Beardly Do Homebrew. Hello. I have Hi. my partner in crime up this week. Cheers. Right. <laughs> what are we making this week, Tim? We're going to try something a bit different. We've already gone through the basics of homebrewing. Oh. So Mab had this ingenious plan. East is around the corner. It is. What do you associate with Easter? Other than Christ our Saviour. <laughs> Other religions are available. <laughs> so we're going to go for making a chocolate stout. Yeah. So we're going to use a, a normal kit stout. We're going to try and keep things as simple as possible. Mm. Um, but we're going to add a bit of chocolate using... Some magic beans. Magic beans. Cacao beans. Fine. Now these are basically um, roasted chocolate beans. So apparently add a bit of a nutty flavour. But um, I think we should just crack on and talk about each bit as we get to it. That sounds like a plan. Let's homebrew. Let's homebrew, motherfuckers. <laughs> So if you've got to that stage now where you're thinking about adding flavours, we're assuming you know the basics. So we've already got this tin in the hot water to, to loosen up the wort. I'm going to open that now and stick it in my barrel. Why is it called wort, Jimmy? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I, I think I called it malt in the last video. <laughs> I prefer the term beer goop. Beer goop. Yeah. Hey! Oh, nice sticky treacle. Do you want to show that to the camera? Treacle. <laughs> Now this hasn't got any of the chocolate flavourings in. No. It does have hints of coffee and chocolate in it, doesn't it? Though? As most stouts do. Mm. So the, the idea, the hope is that when we add the cacao beans, or chocolate beans, whatever they are, it's going to really bring out the flavours of the chocolate. Let's see if I can do this without burning my hands. Again, this could be my £250 on you've been framed. That's right, Matt. You get another camera ready. So you look, it's better when there's two of us. Because then we can get right in there. <laughs> And same as last time, we're going to pour some hot water into the can to try and get as much of this out as possible. Right, so added some hot water to the tin just to get the last dregs out. So it's a lot thicker than um, lager, malt, wort. Ah. Ah. Eh. <laughs> Something else we're going to do a bit different. Not only are we going to add chocolate beans, we're going to change the sugar content. Okay. Yeah. So rather than using just a kilogram of brewing sugar, we're going to use 500 grams of beer enhancer. What is beer enhancer? Well, apparently so this speeds up fermentation um, and adds, adds head formation and retention. So it's going to be more like what we're drinking right now, where we'll have a nice head all the way down. Yeah. Rather than being a bit... Flat, flat. We're going to add 500 grams of beer enhancer mm -hmm. and then we're going to throw in 700 grams of sugar. Right. Let's we'll try something a bit different. We're trying to make it stronger yeah. as well, aren't we? But it smells nice. So, next, we're going to go straight in with our 700 grams of sugar. So, would you like to grab the sugar, my glamorous assistant? <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Slowly pouring. Yeah, let's give it a sprinkle. There like we that. go. Yeah, let's get it nice and mixed. There we go. Ta-da! This is actually, oh no it's not. I guess it's my first ever stout, but it's not. Oh. First stout since you know what you're doing. Nah, that's questionable. <laughs> so next we're going to measure out 500 grams of beer enhancer. I, think this is... I would like to take a moment to introduce you to Beer Cat. <laughs> and now my glamorous assistant has his 500 grams of beer enhancer. Well this clumps together like it a does. Master, soon, it? soon as the steam hits it, but it's not looking too bad. It's not as bad as spray mold, that stuff's terrible. Done. Sugar me, sugar you at all. Right, so we've obviously put some extra sugar in. We've put his beer enhancer in to give it a bit of extra body, give it a good kick. We're hoping for about 7%. <laughs> We're hoping for a good strong yeah. stout, are we? So to add the chocolate, we have... Magic beans. Magic chocolate cocoa beans. Um, again, cocoa nibs. We found these in Sainsbury's. In the baking aisle. Hey! So how much have we got in this? 125 grams? 125 grams of cacao nibs. Cool. So I, from what I've read online and what I've seen, I reckon 125 grams is just about spot on. Mm. Now, we bought roasted. It adds a little bit of a nutty, a nutty flavour apparently. Mm. Um, you can get, what do they call them? The, uh, you can get organic nibs. But the issue with the organic nibs is they can carry bacteria, which so can these actually, so we're going to want to sterilise them. How do we know about sterilising them? Usually you'd add vodka, but 
we're not doing it the usual way. No. Mav's a big whiskey drinker, so oh. we're going to sterilise with Glenfinich. Yeah, why not? Yeah. We're going for a nice chocolate stout with a bit of a, a bit of a whiskey edge and a nice seven percent ABV. I'm not putting any vodka in my beer. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought a little jar. Nice airtight jar that we can keep them in, so that. Because how many days does this need to soak in said whiskey? Very good point. It's about three days. So you want something nice and airtight. Um, the idea is, once fermentation slows down, we're going to add these cocoa nibs. So I imagine in about three days, I'm going to add the whiskey soaked cocoa nibs. And then we're going to leave it another seven days for the flavours to be released and give it that nice chocolatey, that nice chocolatey flavour. Mm. And then we'll be moving it into a second fermentation vessel. But we'll see how that goes. Cocoa nibs. Sure. What I am going to do is try one of these first. They don't look particularly appetising. They sort of look like turds. Mmm. Oh wow. Okay. So the idea is, it's not actually chocolate, it's cocoa beans that have been roasted and peeled. The whiskey or vodka or <laughs> bourbon, whatever you're using. Oh sorry. <laughs> you just want to coat these. So you don't want, I reckon two shots will do the trick. Um, so we have here five centilitres or 50 mils worth of whiskey, which I think is going to be more than enough. So we'll stick that in there. And you basically want to just glaze, glaze the nibs. There we go, that looks good actually. So I'm going to stick the lid on, give it a good shake, and leave for three days before we add to the fermenter. And the, apparently the, the alcohol as well helps them release the flavour. Don't really know how it works. Science! <laughs> <laughs> Science! <laughs> I, I already smells better. <laughs> Whiskey makes anything smell better. So, we're going to leave that three days and just give it a shake every day. Make three sure it's well mixed. Three days. So, next step. Water. Water. Now, all my water's in the fridge because we want to get the temperature. We're at 25. Which is good. That's, that's a good temperature, actually. So, we can get that down to a... A nice 18 to 20 degrees, we're laughing. Yorkshire Vale! As I said before, um, we have the, the pleasure of living in Yorkshire, so we could use the tap water. If you live anywhere else in the country, stick with mineral water. If we could suggest any water. Yorkshire water! <laughs> I mean, that's just life advice. I wouldn't bring the tap water from anywhere other than Yorkshire. What is ridiculous is we live in Yorkshire and we're using bottled Yorkshire water. I don't know. Keep stirring. I'm stirring. Keep stirring! I'm stirring. <laughs> and same as last time, we're going for 23 litres. Already looks like a good stout, <laughs> and it's not brewed yet. Ooh, before we had the yeast! Yes. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> we're going to do a gravity test. Now, before we do the gravity test, I'm going to check the temperature with a thermometer. Now, these little fish tank thermometers are great, but not always the most accurate. So what's it saying on there, Mav? Not always easy to read. Either. Eighteen, I think. Eighteen, which would be spot on, really. So we are showing up at yes, eighteen, eighteen degrees. So to do our hydrometer test, you are going to need your hydrometer, mm -hmm. obviously, a measuring jug, and ideally a sampling syringe. So we're going to take a good old sample out of the beer. It's a shame we're going to lose half a pint out of it, but never mind. Again, before you add the yeast, this is very important. Oh God, this is stiff. What she said. Oh no! <laughs> what happened? The plunger came off. There we go. No, really does it. Ah, it's just very, very stiff. What you don't want to do is pull it too hard and then the syringe will come off. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. You don't want to be doing that, no. Um, and what you want to do, is completely fill this over the air so you don't get any foam set on the top so you get a false reading so let's just get that there and we can just rest that in there push the syringe get it nice and full yeah so you don't have to fill it right to the top because i'm going to put the um hydrometer in we're going to take his hydrometer and drop that in Whee. so we've got a nice clean sample there with no foam in it no. You're gonna let that set. I'll maybe give it, a, maybe give this a spin so we can get a, a clean reading. Make sure there's no bubbles attached to the hydrometer. 
Now, if you can probably see on the camera that the, what the sorry the beer actually lifts up to the number you want the actual level reading of the liquid. So we'll take 1.4 as our gravity reading or hydrometer reading, mm -hmm. and then we'll take it again at the end of the first fermentation. Yes, well done, Mab. <laughs> now, what you can do with this, as it is called a sampling syringe, give it a bit of a taste. Now, obviously, we've only had a bit of extra sugar, so we've not. It's only a kit beer, so the flavour should be pretty standard. But even still, ooh, ooh, I like it. <laughs> it's like I'm in some stupid hipster bar drinking out of this. <laughs> Quite bitter. Yeah, it's just like one flat. It's like that. It's like when you find a can of Guinness that, <laughs> the day after the party. Right, so we're going to add the yeast next. Yeast. Right, now cut the yeast packet. Give it a good shake. Give it a cut. Like that. Mhm. Mm Sprinkle on the top. Ooh. Nice and gently. <laughs> now there is different types of yeast. Um, I imagine with uh, most kit beers, it's going to be um, this, is, this kind of powdered yeast. Some of them are, are liquid. Um, some of them you need to rehydrate before you add to the beer. I just find that, especially with kit beers, just give them a quick sprinkle on the top and give it a very gentle stir. Never had any problems. So, spoon. Gently, gently stir, stir. Ooh, gently, gently. Let's put the lid on. The lid. And your air bomb. Which is this, I believe? Well, that's the, the bung, yeah, that's rubber bung, so that goes in first. The air bung. Now, yeah. if you have any questions or if you're wondering how, if we've skipped over anything and you're not sure about, we have got a how to homebrew video. We do have an introductory video to yeah. homebrewing that Jimmy did. We're, we're assuming that if you're adding flavours to your homebrew, you know what you're doing already. So, if you are a little bit confused, lost, or want some answers on anything that you've maybe missed, go watch a homebrew video or the how to homebrew video. So there we have the first step to making a chocolate stout, a uh, Mav's special Easter chocolate stout. I should be ready in time for Easter. It should be ready in time for Easter. Fingers crossed. I'm, I'm really excited about this I one. I am. So how long do we need um, to leave this then, Jim? How long until we have beer? Yes. Um, well, I'm going to move this into a warm place now, between mm -hmm. 18 and 20 degrees, for three days. Yep, to ferment. Yeah, so basically once fermentation starts to slow, I reckon it'll be about three days. When the bubbles start to slow down, we're going to throw in our cacao beans. Yep. Once they're in there, we're going to leave them for seven days. So that's ten days. That's ten days. Then we're going to move it into our second vessel, which mm -hmm. this time we're using a pressure barrel again. Once it's in the pressure barrel, we're leaving it in a warm environment for... The longer the better, really. So maybe three weeks. Okay. For the best flavours. Yeah. And so then we're going to move it to the cold environment for another two weeks um, and then drink. So I mean, just in time for just Easter. Just in time for Easter. I mean, we'll cover the duration of how long we're leaving it at each stage. I mean, it just depends on temperature and, and how your fermentation goes. That's something you can do. Comment on what you think we should call the beer. What should we name the beer? It's chocolate, it's stout, it's strong. Aye. <laughs> So you're, allowed, so you're not allowed any of those words in the name. Um, as you can probably hear, fermentation is actually well underway. We'll show you the airlock and the, the bubbles rising. There we go. Now, the small issue. I, it was a bit cold last night. I wrapped a heat band around the fermentation vessel and forgot to turn it off. Shh! Don't tell Mav. Mm. It's been on all night and the temperature has risen to 29 degrees in the vessel, which isn't good. It's way too high. Now, what that can do is create off flavours. I have done it before and it ends up tasting like banana. Uh, what you can apparently do, if, if you experience this yourself, um, leave it to sit on the yeast um, up to two weeks, really. The yeast will take care of it. The yeast will the yeast will eat any whatever it is that causes those flavours, basically. The yeast will take care of it. Again, we don't know the science. We just go along with it. So, obviously, I've the temperature down in the room we're going to get it back down to 21 degrees we're going to leave it another three days and add the cacao beans so in the next segment we'll be adding the cacao beans we're going to be tasting a sample to make sure it doesn't taste like banana otherwise we're just going to have a chocolate banana stout basically <laughs> okay next step cocoa nibs
take off the air bump, then remove the lid, open your cocoa nibs, Ooh. and then basically pour them in. Cocoa nib. Mm hmm. And then obviously we're going to reseal the lid. Then I'll quickly change the water in my airlock and put the airlock back in place. Okay, and there we have it. We've added the cocoa nibs. Now, as you can see, um, it looks like fermentation's kicked straight back in once I've added the cocoa nibs. So we're going to leave this in for another seven days. Um, it's sat at 21 degrees at the moment, which is great. After seven days, we'll obviously take a gravity reading, make sure fermentation has completely stopped. Obviously, at that point, we can taste it, make sure the chocolate flavours are there. And then we're going to siphon this into our second fermentation vessel, which will be our pressure barrel. Okay, it's been seven days since we added the cacao nibs. And um, we're going to do a quick gravity test now, just to see whereabouts the ABV is sitting. So I'm going to take out my airlock. Obviously, again, remove the lid. So same as when we took the first gravity reading, you're going to grab your sampling syringe. Take a sample straight out of the fermenting bucket. So again, we're going to drop our hydrometer into the sample and just take the reading of where the, the beer sits. I'll try and show the camera, but we, we sat at about a 1.6, so that'll be a, a 1.060. So once you've got your final gravity, you can work out your ABV using the formula that's in your instructions. So it's your original gravity which for us was 1.4, so you translate that into 1040, minus from that the final gravity, which was 1.6, so that's 1006. You take the figure from that and divide it by 7.46, then add 0 0.5, which gives us a ABV of 6.4%. So it was aiming for 7, so that's not too bad, we're just about there. And now I'm going to have a little taste, see if any of that chocolate flavours come through. Okay, so I am picking up chocolate, um, not quite as much as maybe expected, um, but we'll see how it turns out at the end of final fermentation. To be honest, it actually tastes really, really nice, so, so that's good. So now obviously I'm going to siphon into my second fermentation vessel, which again this time we're using a pressure barrel. Now I'm going to throw in 100 grams of sugar, which... The instructions recommend 85, so I'm hoping that a little bit of extra sugar will push that ABV up just a little bit more to maybe around the 7%. Now, if you did watch my How to Homebrew videos, um, we used a pressure barrel to make lager and it was a little bit flat. We had to inject some CO2 to pick up the fizz. Now, with making a stout, you don't want it to be too fizzy. The reason that wasn't too fizzy is because we're using one of these Wilkinson's pressure barrels and they didn't really hold the pressure well enough, so I lost a lot of the CO2 there. But as I say, with it being a, a stout, uh, you don't want it too fizzy, so I think actually a pressure barrel is going to be perfect to get that right kind of level. I suppose another thing to think about as well is the chocolate flavour is probably sat at the bottom. Don't know, but like I say, we'll, we'll find out at the end of fermentation. Obviously, it's all a bit pointless now, but uh, the sugar's already been added in here, so I don't have to put the sugar in the bottles. Um, so I'm just going to, as quick as I can, get all this transferred into the bottles. And looks like we're going to be using these instead. Really not ideal. I've um, just had to run to Wilkinson's to buy two boxes of plastic bottles. The issue is I now don't have time to clean them, um, I don't want to lose as little beer as possible. 
so hopefully it'll, it'll all still turn out okay but I'm, I'm running that risk of infection which is unfortunate really so the good thing about using bottles which I think I've mentioned before at least when it comes to putting them in a cool place keep them in the fridge so I'm going to finish the, I'm going to finish filling these bottles I'm going to put them back in a box put a heat band in there keep them warm for at least two weeks then we're going to chill and drink and all being well <laughs> we'll we'll have a really nice chocolate stout but this is just an example of how things can quite easily go wrong even though I checked the barrel beforehand, I pressurised it, made sure there were no leaks. Somehow it sprung a leak in the tap. Just shows it's always good to be prepared. Always have a backup plan. Stay tuned for the next segment, where obviously we'll be tasting the beer. See you later. So here we are. I'm with Mav. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We have. I'm on an air cut. Is an air cut? I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> so we had. Um, we finally reached the tasting stage Time of the chocolate Chop stout. Still unnamed. Death stout. Death stout. Because well, it's strong. We asked at the start of this video for you to think of some names. We've had none. Well, no, because it hasn't been uploaded yet. Ah! <laughs> so... I didn't think that through. Oh, did we? <laughs> so it's called Death Stout! <laughs> if you've got any better names, send them across. Why is it called Death Stout? Because it's lethal. It's lethal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what is the final barometer... Barometer? Barometer-ish thing reading? How, gravity reading. I, how, how high did your bobby bit of plastic <laughs> bobby, bit, bobby bit of plastic, give it a reading. Um, well, it's weird if you're watching this, this is only like three minutes ago for you, but it's actually weeks ago for us. I think it was seven and a half percent. It's been years. It's been years. Um, seven and a half percent, I think. Right. Annotation needed, I'll say that. <laughs> so we pour? need to we need to pour it. Okay, we'll cut to Mavcam. Cut to Mavcam. We'll cut to Mavcam. Mavcam. <laughs> Magical. Magical. I'm not, I'm not doing an outro yet, I haven't really tasted it. No, no. So this has been um, in the fridge for two weeks. Conditioning. Is that what it's called? It's called conditioning. I thought it was called chilling. Chilling. It does look the part, doesn't it? Sort of. I mean, mm. it certainly is a stout. How does it smell, Mav? Chocolatey. Is it out? <laughs> There's a hint of vanilla in there as well. You know, it does. I'm bitter. That looks so solid. Let's give us a drink. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Mm. That is a very familiar taste. Yeah, it's it's chocolatey. It's a bit harsh. But not like too it. harsh. It's small. It's almost a porter. Yeah, it does taste more like, but then it's going to taste like a porter because it's strong. <laughs> that and it's not through a cream floor. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you did watch the other videos as well, we made a lager in a keg. We're going to give a bit of a lesson here. I've been speaking to some professionals, actual professionals. Um, when making stuff like this, you put this in a keg mm -hmm. because when you pour it through the tap, it smooths it and you don't need as much pressure because it's not as fizzy. Lagers don't go in battles. No, no. There you go. Don't go in lager bottles. Going bottles. That's why his lager were flat. That's why his lager were flat. Why does it always give me a headache, that lager? It never gives me a headache. We finished it off the other day, I had a pounding headache. That's because you drank a lot of it. <laughs> As I'm drinking it though, <laughs> every time we've had a session on it, I've come home with an headache. Mm. Maybe I just don't cut it lager anymore. Maybe. You don't ever drink lager, do you? Not, I never get a headache from it. So, Anyway, I hope this video has been insightful for anybody that wants to add flavours to the to the stout. What are we trying next, Jim? Ooh, we have bought some raspberry Belgian ale. Because why not? Well, because his wife likes it, that's why. His wife's like, will you give me some raspberry beer? Basically, we went to a local <laughs> microbrewery. They had 
a sheep? No. What's a sheep. <laughs> sheep. That sheep beer. That sheep beer. Sheep beer. Sheep um, beer. I can't remember what it was called. Raspberry beer. Or cherry beer. A crake stuff for it. Creek. Creek. That was it. So basically, I'm miles off with sheep. Yeah, I was right. So basically, this company that makes this creek beer, mm. um, I went to go buy some of this beer that they were drinking. It was a cherry beer, so cherry creek. Um, we we're assuming it's called creek. Creek. Um, creek. Belgium. So it's probably creek. <laughs> I'm saying creek. <laughs> um, but they didn't have any of the stockists. But the same company that makes it had the raspberry beer, so I bought the raspberry beer. So, so stay tuned. For, not stay tuned, but keep your eye out for that. It's coming. It's in, coming. In the soon to be future. The soon present. to be future present because this, like I say, this video has been weeks, months in the making. We we, we were. A, it was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. <laughs> we were both much more awake at that time. Yeah. I was anyway. It was pre-child. This is me post-child. Yeah, I was. I was post-child. You was post-child. I'm even further post-child. <laughs> so anyway, kids. There's been men behaving badly do chocolate stout. It's actually so we've gone off topic. This is actually really, really nice. I mean we were sat here trying to make it look like it's the first time we've tried it, but we've actually drank half it already. <laughs> I've heard it, mm. It's like the cocoa pops of stout. It's not it's not like an overpowering chocolate though. I'd rather have a pint of no. your death stout. There you go. That's the brand in there. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>